Hello and welcome back. As I promised in the last one, we are going to be communicating with the internet today. So we need to have a plugin to handle that. You need to download the plugin called Varrest or Varrest. I don't know. It's uh, handling REST communications at least. And uh, you're going to need that one. It's free. So just install that to engine. Once you have installed it to engine, head over to edit plugins, search up your Varrest and then enable that. Once that is done, come back here. Let's head into our cookie game instance. And we are going to move these down. I'm actually going to remove this initialize save. And we're going to move this one down as well. Now, we are going to be creating time from this, uh, from the, going to create a timing system from uh, basically ourselves. We're not going to use necessarily the in in-house version. As you remember, we set up on our initialize and then zero, we checked if it's not valid and then it keeps looping until it's valid. However, when it's valid, we're not doing anything. So that's what we're going to set up today. Going to add a new custom event. I'm going to call this one get time. Once our hut is valid, then we're going to call our get time. Like so. And that actually signifies that, uh, tells me that this is done. So. This one is initializes, waits for HUD to be ready, valid, then proceeds to get the time. This one is completely done. Make that green. Now let's move down. So that's the first thing that it's going to do. The second thing is going to be the getting of the time. So now we need to get our subsystem out. So get a uh, virus subsystem. Out from that, you can call URL. That one plugs into there. Out from virus subsystem, you're also going to get, uh, construct the JSON object. That one goes into the get time, like so. So it constructs the object. Then it proceeds to call the URL with a return node of this construct. So virus JSON is that. This is going to be a get and it's going to be a JSON. We're going to get into the URL shortly. I'm going to plug that into up there. Out from the callback, we're going to create event. Uh, actually, we're not going to do it like that. We're just going to right click and do a custom event. Call this one time date and plug that into the node like so. We need, are going to make some variables. So let's make uh, some integers. As I said, we're going to do this from the start. Uh, not using the uh, make time, uh, make date time. We're not going to use that. We're going to just set it up ourselves. I'm going to make it like this. So seconds, minutes, ah, hours, day, month, and year. Instead of a struct, we're going to make a new struct. Actually, now that I think about it this is completely unnecessary because we are going to set up the exact same things in here <laughs> so seconds and year i'm going to keep the other one though doesn't really matter to me you can clean this up however you want it out from time date we're going to do a for loop Now, I want to calculate all of these things. So that's six entries. So that's from zero to five. In the loop body, I'm going to do a, uh, out from the index, I'm going to switch on integer. So you could do this however you want it to be. I'm just going to set it up like this. So from zero to five. It's zero. Mm, that's going to be the year, actually. It's going to be the opposite way. So the seconds is the last one, five. Uh, minutes is the next one for seconds, minutes, hours, is the third day, month, year. Right? So it's gonna from each of these, it is going to do that. It's going to switch on the integer. However, 
we want to get. Mm, yeah. So we want to out from our. Bah, bada bah, bada bah. It's kind of weird that this one doesn't have that. So let's uh, let's remove this callback. Create event. Uh, create a matching event. We call this one time date. Same as we had before. Just that we're moving it up. Move that, then plug it in. Now we have our request here as well. Out from our request, we're going to get the response object. I'm going to get the field names. Now, let us uh, actually go into that website so I can show you what we are about to do. Hi, this is Future Tommy. I'm just saving you guys a lot of uh, rambling, trying to explain something that I am not 100% uh, comfortable with. Uh, so it ended up taking a lot longer than I wanted it to. Uh, I made this picture for you to so just show you what we are trying to get out of our Intel, uh, out of our API. So we are getting zero, which is year, which is the field name. So we're getting the field name and then we're switching on the field names to populate the correct locations. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. We are going to use uh, just Europe Amsterdam because it doesn't really matter where it's from. We're going to calculate offline time. It doesn't necessarily need to know where we're calculating it from. You could calculate it from fucking Mars if you want to. It doesn't matter. This does not have to be for the player, uh, player's location. Anyway, when we get our request, we are going to get this intel and we need to start deciphering this intel or parsing out the intel that we want. So copy this link. I'm going to put that in the description. This goes into a URL. We're going to get the field name at the index in our loop, right? So it's going to go to zero. Okay, that's the year. Now we're going to get the field. So get the response object again, get field. Now we're getting the Intel inside of that field, like so. We know that we are getting the year right now. Out from this return mode, we're going to do a as integer 60, uh, 64. But th that is the, it's, it's zero for the year, but it's not zero for anything else. You know what I mean? So this one is just going to go into everything of this, every every one of these. You don't have to make a new one every time. You could do it like that. So if the index is zero, it's going to switch on the int of zero, and then it's going to put it to the year. If int is one, it's going to uh, know that it's okay to the month. We're going to get the intel from the field, use it as a, uh, get the information as an integer, and set that to the month, and so on and so forth. Let us move. We want a little bit more space. We're going to do some things in here. Now, we are also going to add a new variable. This one is going to be our time struct. Remember we made time struct previously. We're going to set time struct. We're going to break that open. Out from completed. And we're going to give time struct the information that we have just set. Then we're going to make a new variable. Now we're going to use some integrated stuff. So this is going to be our current time span this is going to be a time span I'm going to set current time span to the same intel that we have just set to everything else so this one is going to be just plug it in this is going to be crossing of lines it's okay for me because it's uh, just going to be like this anyway, anyway uh that is not how you do it because we are actually going to set current time span and then we're going to make time span. This is going to be a second time span. You'll, you'll see in a minute. And that's going to be set there. Now our seconds into seconds, minutes into minutes, hours into hours, and day into day. We're not going to use uh, any fractions. Fractions are fine. And then once this is done, then we're going to initialize the saves. Right? Initialize the saves. Like so. Believe it or not, that is actually it for our communications. We're getting the time. Let's comment this out. 
this one is going to be two. This is the second thing we're doing. Using var rest, we use the free timeapi.io website to get info in JSON format from an arbitrary location. Europe slash Amsterdam. In this case, but it doesn't matter. We use an online source for our time and dates so the user can't mess with time settings in order to trick the system. This one's done. Set that to green. Now, our save game, let us work with that. We have a bakery save struct here that we need to add into our create save game object. We haven't updated that actually. And then we also want to add a new thing to our uh, is it a bakery save struct. Yeah. Then here we're going to add a new one. It's going to be the time struct. Time structs, like so. Compile. Uh, delete save games when you're working with uh, changing your saves and the time struct is the time struct that we made um, up there after we have done saving we're going to initialize saves this is only on creation make a new function this one is generate offline revenue out of here we, we're actually going to have an input it's going to be the seconds. We're not going to make this one at the moment. But we are going to set it up a little bit. Going to plug that in. And we need some intel to feed into that. This one down. We're going to get the current time span. Uh, actually, we need to, before we do this, we have a save struct here. And also, we need to set this as well. So. Our shop entry struct, we set that to the saved one. And then our uh, 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 our time struct, we're going to break that open. We're going to make time span. This is going to be our first time span. Seconds to seconds and so on. Promote that to a variable. This is going to be our saved time span. Right? If that is on, you can plug that offline revenue back in. Then we're going to get our current time span and our save time span. We're going to get total seconds out from that. So we're getting our total seconds in our current time span. And also the ones in our save time span. Then we're going to do our current time span minus the saved ones. And that's going to give us the output of how much difference there is in seconds, aka uh, how much, uh, and then that we can use that to the CPS. Okay, and then we can generate our offline revenue. After that is done, we can get our HUD ref, initialize stats, and then save game again. Then we have updated and uh, we're saving it once more. That is it for our, yeah, I think that is it for our save. So three, we check for a save game. If it does not exist, we create it and set the variables. We then proceed to update slash initialize our HUD stats, cookies, etc. If we do have a save, we load it and grab the intro from the save game object. We then compare the current time to the save time using time spans. Get the total seconds of both and calculate what we should receive while being offline. After this is done, we initialize slash update the stats once more and then save the game in order to set the new time. Set that to green, we're done.
Done on a save game. We now have a time struct that we need to add in. That's going to be our time struct, like so. That one is done. And our ticks are also done, I believe. Pile, hit play. We do our generate, just set up a, a, a test here. So we're going to do, because I have to go and I have to finish this later. I'm going to do a append. Like that. You were offline for. And then I'm going to have in the seconds. Seconds. And generated. Mm, seconds. Uh, cookies multiplied. Cookies per second multiplied by seconds. And generated that many. Cookies. Then I can return. There we go. In the top left, it said that I was only playing for 61 seconds. If I do it now, I'll play for 5 seconds because, you know, it's 5 seconds from the last time that I was out. If I wait now for like 6, 7, 10 maybe ish. That'd be 7. So now it's calculating that. In the next episode, we're going to be finishing off the calculation and also adding some uh, way to, yeah, handle everything. And, uh, yeah, actually, actually, no, no, never mind, never mind. We're going to finish this one because we, actually, I just realized that this one is really simple. This one is not difficult at all. So we are going to just set cookies to cookies plus, and that's the fucking outcome of this, isn't it? We can set our cookies. That is our generate offline revenue. Remember, after we generate, we also save the game and initialize the stats. So that is our offline revenue uh, completed. In the next one, we are probably going to finish off, finish off the entire series. And uh, yeah, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye.